Hi everyone, my name is Daud and I welcome you all to Shiv Jyoti Online Classes. Happy Winters everybody. Today we are going to study a new, a very interesting chapter of English Literature. It's called The Play, chapter 12, page number 125. So shall we begin? Let's go. So before we start the chapter, we would first like to know about the writer because that is a very important thing. That is something we always do and that is something we will never stop doing because we should always give due credit to writers. They write these stories for us and we should always give uh, due credit to writers and poets for their beautiful work of art. So William Shakespeare, I'm sure you have heard this name before in your, especially in your GQ book. He is a very famous writer. William Shakespeare's play include tragedies, comedies and historical plays. These works have been translated into every major language. Hamlet, Macbeth and The Merchant of Venice are some of his most popular plays. A Midsummer Night's Dream is one of his comedies. So William Shakespeare, uh, you know, uh, William Shakespeare has written all this. Uh, we just uh, had, had a look of, we just got to know about his work. He has written uh, plays and, uh, and many books. And uh, his famous work includes Hamlet, Macbeth and The Merchant of Venice. Okay. Today we are going to uh, read a play written by him. So let's get inside the story. So we are going to read a single scene from William Shakespeare, A, Midnight, a Midsummer Night's Dream. So this is a play which is called A Midsummer Night's Dream and we are going to read just a single scene of it, just a single part of it, just a single scene, okay? A royal wedding is about to take place and as part of the celebrations, a group of ordinary people consisting of artisans like a carpenter, a weaver, a tailor and so on, uh, plan to stage a play. This scene shows that them beginning their rehearsal, these artisans are neither educated nor experienced in acting and their innocent efforts are shown in humorous light. So in this story, there is a royal wedding going to take place. Royal wedding means a uh, wedding of king and queen or prince or princess. They are royal wedding. So there is about to be a royal wedding. And there are some people, ordinary people, who are going to perform a play, who are going to do a skit, who are going to do a drama performance on stage, a stage play. For who? For the wedding day of king and queen. For, you know, for the royal wedding, they are doing rehearsal, they are preparing. And who are those people? They are ordinary people, especially they are artisans. Artisans, you know, those uh, who do their work, uh, who do some, who are involved in skillful work uh, using their hands, you know, with the help of their hands, they do uh, many uh, awesome things like uh, uh, carpenter and weaver and tailor. So these are all people who are gathered together to perform uh, this play and they are going to rehearse, they are going to practice and they are neither very educated nor experienced in acting. This is the part which will make this story funny and humorous because they are not educated and they have no experience in acting and yet they are going to do acting. So it's going to be, you know, we are going to see all this in a humorous way, in a funny way. So there will be some places where you will be bursting with laughter. So be prepared for that. The rehearsal is taking place in a clearing in the middle of a forest and there is something else going on in that forest. There is a community of fairies including Oberon, their king, Titania, the queen and Puck, the king's handyman who possess magical powers and a mischievous mind. There has just been a big quarrel between Oberon, the king and Titania, the queen and Oberon wishing to teach the queen a lesson had asked Puck to put the juice of a magical flower on Titania's eyelid while she is asleep. The juice will make her fall madly in love with whoever she feels she sees first on waking up. Titania is asleep where the artisans are rehearsing, but they have not seen her. We first see the artisans discussing matters of acting and stage arrangement, then Puck does some mischief and Queen Titania wakes up, okay? So uh, we have, you know, two scenes going on at the same time. 
uh, a group of people uh, who are artisans, carpenters, and all those people, they are rehearsing, they are practicing for their stage. On the other side, here, there is a group of fairies. I hope you have heard of fairies, jo hoti hai. Okay? Uh, and, and, and in the world of fairies, there are both male and female. And the king of that uh, uh, fairy tale world, that uh, king of all those fairies is Oberon. And the queen is Titania. And they are fighting with each other. Hmm, what do you think of yourself? Huh? Titania, what do you think of yourself? I'm going to show you, Titania says. And they are quarreling with each other, they are fighting. And there is one more person, uh, Puck. He's called Puck. He knows magic. He, you know, he's, uh, he's the handyman of the King Oberon. And he is into doing magic. He knows magic. So let's see what will happen. And, and the king has decided to teach you a lesson, to teach, a, sorry, to teach queen a lesson. Oh, I'll teach you a lesson. I'll show you. Hmm. I'll show you. They're fighting and the king is saying to the queen, the king Oberon is telling the queen Titania, that I'm going to show you. I'll show, I'll teach you a lesson. I'll teach you a lesson. You don't want to listen to me? Okay, okay. Do whatever you want to do. Do. I'm not afraid of you. Do whatever you want to. And then the king Oberon has uh, told this magician Pug, hey Pug, I want you to do some magic with the queen. I want to punish my queen. I want you to do something. I want you to do a magic. So this Pug is going to, you know, uh, using his magic, he's going to put something into the eyes of uh, the queen Titania while she is asleep. And after, whenever she will wake up, the first person animal thing Titania sees she is going to fall in love with that person, thing, or animal, or whatever she sees. So it's going to be very interesting to see. Let's get inside the story. There are some characters given, and uh, some of, about some of them we have already talked. A list of characters are all artisans. Uh, bottom, Snout, Flute, Quince, Starveling, Snug, and Puck, Peace Blossom, Moth, Titania, Cobweb, Mustard Seed. So these are the major characters in the story. And let's see, uh, as we advance further in the story, uh, mainly there are two boys and two girls in the artisans and uh, two other boys also. And he, these are the f uh, characters from the fairy world and these are the characters from human world. So scene one, the wood, Titania lying asleep, Enter Quince, Snug Bottom, Flute, Snout, and Starveling. Okay? Titania, the Queen Titania is asleep. Okay? She's asleep there. Imagine the Queen is asleep. And these people, Quince, Snug Bottom, Flute, Snout, and Starveling, they have entered. And who are they? They are ordinary, normal people. Those the, the, uh, carpenter, one of them is carpenter, one of them is uh, weaver, one of them is tailor. They, you know, they, to impress the king, to make the king happy. On the wedding day of the king, they want to perform a play. They want to do their uh, uh, drama performance. So for the practice of that, they have entered. And somewhere in the corner, queen is asleep. This is all is happening in a forest, in a jungle. Okay, somewhere in the corner. Queen Titania is asleep. Uh, she's sleeping. And these people, they can't see her because she is a fairy. Okay? Whenever she would want to make herself appear to these people, they will be able to see her. Uh, but for right now, they are not able to see her. Maybe because she's a fairy or because, you know, uh, they haven't paid attention to it. So, bottom is saying, are we all met? Quince, pet, pet, this is a marvelous, convenient place for our rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage. This uh, hawthorn brack, brack of our tiring house. And we will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Duke is the uh, word that, uh, that is used for the king of uh, Athens for who the, these people are going to perform. So Bottom asks if they are, you know, uh, Bottom is asking, okay, are we all here? Are we all gathered here? And Quinn says, yes, it looks like a very awesome place. Wow, so green. It's, it's a perfect place. It's the most convenient place. We are going to really enjoy practicing here. Hmm. Uh, bottom, I think it's the perfect place. This is where we should practice. Hmm. Peter Quinn's. Quinn's, what says the belly bottom? Uh, bottom, there are 
things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never work. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot bear. How answer you that? Okay, if you are wondering uh, how is this uh, English sounding different, this is Old English. Uh, that's how it used to be before and uh, this is uh, from the writings of William Shakespeare so this is uh, there are two reasons that it is number one this is Old English and number two uh, William Shakespeare had a very different style of writing so uh, uh, please be with me don't go anywhere we are going to really enjoy this story so you have heard here Pyramus and Thisbe Pyramus and Thisbe do you see these names here Pyramus and Thisbe uh, was a famous story. This is the story, this is the play, this is the drama that they want to do. Uh, Pyramus and Thisbe, they are now talking to each other. They have reached there, they have gathered together and now, now they are talking about uh, the things that they will need in the play. And now they say, uh, who is saying this? Uh, they are, bottom is saying this, uh, that you know there are things in this comedy uh, there, are many, there are certain things that that, that, are, uh, that won't work out, I think, because uh, we need to have a sword and with the help of the sword, the pyramid, the pyramus, the hero who is going to be the hero, he, he's, he has to kill himself and the ladies in the audience, they won't be able to see it. They are not going to take it easily and they are going to take it really hard. So what should we do about it? Uh, Pyramus and Thisbe. So Pyramus is the boy and Thisbe is the girl and they are lovers. Th you know, so this is the drama, this is the story that they want to do. As the, they want to play out, they want to act, they want to do this drama on stage on the wedding day, this drama, uh, Pyramus and Thisbe. And this guy bottom, he is going to play the role of Pyramus and there is a girl in their group who, uh, and she is going to play the role of Thisbe. So this Pyramus, he, you know, uh, they need to have a sword. Imagine this, this is a sword. And in the end, this Pyramus is going to kill himself. Oh. And that, they are worried about that scene. That what if the ladies in the audience, they think that, you know, it's real. What should we do about it? So Snout says, uh, that's a palace fear. You know, that's a very fearful thing. Starveling, I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. And Starveling is suggesting that, you know, uh, we should leave the killing out, you know, we should not, you know, we should leave that part out. Bottom, not at all. I have a plan to make all well. Write me a prologue and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for a better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus but bottom the weaver this will put them out of fear so when you know uh, people used to watch these plays they used to be lost in them completely today also sometimes when we are watching a serious film we are completely lost in the film so this is what they are expecting to be happening in the future that the ladies in the audience they are going to be completely lost in the play performance that they are going to put up and they are going to think that the hero Pyramus, the lover of Thisbe, is dead for real. And uh, one of them suggested, let's leave out this scene. But Bottom said, no, 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 not at all. I have an idea. Why don't we write a prologue and we are going to read it out to people and we are going to say that Pyramus is not dead for real. In fact, Pyramus is not Pyramus. I, Bottom, I am playing the role of Pyramus and he is not dead and it's just uh, acting, it's not real. This is what they think that they should do. So this is, and what is a prologue? Prologue is the kind of, uh, it, it's a piece uh, uh, of writing in which you announce about the characters or in, the, in which uh, you make uh, some important announcement like uh, in this prologue they are going to write something like this that we are not going to do any harm with this sword that we have with us. This is only for the purpose of this drama. We don't mean any harm. We are not going to do any harm with this sword. And the Pyramus is not dead for real. I am playing Pyramus. So uh, they are going to read out the prologue to announce this and to make the to let them know that Pyramus is not going to die for real. Quince, 
well we will have such a prologue and it shall be written in 8 and 6 then Quinn says okay we are going to have such prologue and we are going to write in 8 and 6 and then the suggestion come no it should be uh, 8 by 8 8 and 8 no make it two more let it be written in 8 and 8 and so this is the format of prologue that they are talking about and bottom said that you know it should be written in 8 and 8 and the, uh, through, with the help of prologue they are going to uh, uh, make the fear of those ladies go away and then snout one of their friends says uh, will not the ladies be afraid of the lion lion <laughs> so there is going to be a lion in this play too so now they are thinking okay this problem is solved but what about the lion we are going to introduce in the play there is going to be a lion <laughs> What about that? Ladies in the audience, they are going to be afraid. Oh, oh my God, lion! They, they'll be afraid. And what will we do about that? Do we have any solution for it? Starveling, I fear it, I promise you. Bottom, masters, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring in God, shield us. A lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing, for there is not a more fearful wild fowl than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. So bottom says, lion is the most dangerous and most fearful and most dreadful thing to be there and to be you know around the ladies and ladies are going to freak out ladies are going to freak out how are we going to introduce the lion i don't understand and the bottom is saying you know they, we should do something about it and we should think of something because lion because uh, you know uh, the population of uh, lions uh, you know the population you know decreased uh, you know it, the, the population was too much at that time there were enough lions and people used to be so afraid of lions because uh, they, they were more in number uh, unfortunately the, they are you know uh, not as many as they used to be in the past uh, lion is uh, a very lovely animal a uh, very good animal Snout, therefore another prologue must tell he is not a lion. Snout, snout is saying that we are going to write another pro prologue and with the help of that prologue we are going to announce, we are going to tell the people that it's not a real lion. Bottom, nay, you must name his name and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck and he himself must speak through saying thus or to the same defect ladies or fair ladies I would wish you or I would request you or I would entreat you not to fear not to tremble my life for yours if you think I come hither as a lion it were pity of my life no I am no such thing I am a man as other men are and there should in and, and there indeed let his name his name and tell them plainly he is snug the joiner okay so bottom is bottom has come up with a better idea no 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 no. this time we are not going to announce the prologue this now this time we are not going to use the prologue let the person who is playing the role of the lion say or you know announce uh, himself to the audience you know uh, they have decided that one person will be wearing the lion mask or uh, lion head something and he is going to remove that and he is going to say you know you know you see this word defect here this is the part of the humor since they are not uh, they are just friends or they are not maybe uh, this one of the reasons could be that they are not educated and the other reason could be that you know they're just they're friends and they're having fun and they're having fun and so they're, they're humorous people so for instead of effect he says defect you know just to uh, and uh, uh, Shakespeare has written defect here maybe to make us laugh or to make it humorous uh, this bottom is saying instead of effect uh, defect or to the same effect it should have been you know uh, effect here but uh, he says defect to make us laugh ladies or fair ladies I am not a real lion the, the, the person who is going to snout snug sorry snug the joiner joiner means carpenter snug uh, the the carpenter he is going to play the role of lion and he will remove his mask and he will say hey, ladies don't be afraid i'm snug the joiner i'm not a real lion and then he will wear that again so this is what they have planned for the part of lion quince well it shall be so but there are two other hard things that is to bring the moonlight into a chamber for you know pyramus and thisbe meet by moonlight so you know um, okay this problem quince is saying okay done this problem is solved this problem is solved 
but we have other problems to face. You know, when you are about to uh, uh, do a play, uh, you're rehearsing for it, there are so many things that you need to keep in mind and so many things you need to think about and work out and plan. So now they're thinking, you know, Paramus and Thisbe, they meet at the time of moonlight. So from where we are going to bring moonlight, my friends? From where are we going to bring moonlight? You know, these lovers, Lela, Majnu, Romeo, and Juliet, their stories are, you know, very, uh, they, they are shown in a very romantic and in, in, in a very uh, beautiful manner. So similarly, this story of Pyramus and Thisbe, they, uh, they need moonlight because they meet by moonlight. Snout, doth the moon shine that night we play our play? Snout says, Mm, uh, what do you say? Will the moon shine that night on the play? You know, the, the night, that, that, that day, no, we are going to do the play. On that day, you know, moon is going to shine or not? What do you say? Do you have any idea? Bottom, a calendar, a calendar. Look in the almanac, find out the moon shine, find out moonshine. So almanac is a thing on which uh, uh, about the moon is mentioned that on which day moon will appear, on which day moon won't be there. So they are using to they are going to use this almanac and they are going to see. Quince reads from a book. Yes, it doth shine that night. Yes, hooray. Yeah, it's going to shine that night. Moon will be there. On that night of wedding, on that night when we are going to do our play, when we are putting up our best performance, when we are doing our play for real, moon will be there. So we will have the moonlight with us. The problem for the moonlight is solved. And remember, have you forgotten about the Queen Titania, fairy? She is asleep there. You remember that? Don't forget about it. They're all doing all this discussion, they're doing all this practice, and at the same time, Queen Titania is asleep there, and you know, somewhere in the corner or somewhere around them. Bottom, why then may you leave a casement, a casement of the great chamber window where we play open and the moon may shine in through the casement? I Quinn says, or else one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lanthorn and say he comes to disfigure or to present the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing we must have a wall in the great chamber. For Pyramus and Thisbe says the story uh, did talk through the chink of a wall. So they are going to, uh, you know, they have another problem now. What are we going to do about the hall? Because in the love story of Pyramus and Thisbe, there used to be a wall and there was a chink in the wall and through that chink they used to talk to themselves and how are we going to do it? How are we going to bring the wall on a stage? So let's see the solution they have come up with. Snout, you can never bring in a wall. What say you, bottom? You can never bring in a wall on the stage. Bottom, some man or other must present wall and let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall and let him hold his fingers thus and through that cranny shall Pyramus and uh, Thisbe whisper. This bottom looks like a very smart and um, intelligent guy. He is their smartest friend. He is the smartest one in the group. So he has come up for the solution for this also. He is saying that one person is going to, uh, you know, uh, there will be a plaster or cement or something like this all over one person uh, to make him look like a wall and he is going to stand there and he is going to uh, use his finger like this. They are going to make a hall like this for Pyramus and this week to talk. Can you see this hall? They are going to make such hall and, you know, uh, it may be then all is well. Come sit down. Every mother's son and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin when you have spoken your speech. Enter into the break and so to everyone according to his cue. So uh, they have decided that one person is going to stand there as the wall and you know uh, they're going to do, like he's going to make his hands or fingers like this. He's going to use it like this and this will be the finger. This will be uh, the hall, the chink in the wall and uh, through this, the, the Pyramus and Thisbe will talk to each other and whisper. This is whisper, okay? I am Thisbe, how are you? I am good, how are you? This, how are you? Uh, Pyramus and Thisbe, they are going to talk like that. Quince, if that may be, then all is well. Okay, if that's done, we're, we're fine. Come sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your part. Pyramus, you begin when you have spoken your speech, enter into the break, and so too, everyone according to his cue. So, 
they have said, okay, now everything is, uh, the problem is solved, everything is done, all set, let's begin the practice. Now, everybody, please uh, start the practice now. So, you know, Pyramus, bottom, you are playing the role of, uh, role of uh, Pyramus, the lover. Now, you enter the scene after this. And at the same time, enter Puck behind, unseen by others. You remember this Puck? Puck is the magician of the King Oberon. He has entered there. And unseen by others, these people uh, didn't see him or they couldn't see him. He has also entered Puck. What hempen homespuns have we swaggering here? So near the sleeping fairy queen. Queens speak Pyramus, this be stand forth, bottom, this be the flowers of odious savors sweet. So now Puck has entered. <laughs> Who are these people? Our queen is asleep there. Who are these people and what are they doing here? This is what Puck is thinking and Puck uh, is seeing everybody, all these bottom queens and all these friends. Queens, odors, odors, bottom odors, savors, sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest, this by dear. But hark a voice, stay thou, but here a while, and by and by I will to thee return. Puck, a stranger, Pyramus, that e'er played here, must I speak now? Ay, you must. For you must understand he goes but to see a noise that he heard and is to come back and is to come again. Flute, most radiant Pyramus, most lily white of who, of color like the red rose on triumphant briar, most brisky juvenile, and ache most lovely Jew, as true as truest horse, that yet would never tire. I'll meet the Pyramus at Nini's tomb. So at Nini's tomb that they, uh, this person flute delivering the dialogue and uh, appreciating Pyramus and talking about how beautiful, how handsome Pyramus is. And Pyramus has been gone to enter the scene. He's not in the scene. Quince, Nina's storm, man, why you must not speak that yet, that you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your lines at once, coos, and all the Pyramus enter. Your cue is passed and it is never tired. So, uh, she, uh, Flute was busy ap appreciating Pyramus that, you know, as loyal, as honest, uh, as uh, a horse, and, you know, as faithful as a horse, the Pyramus is. And uh, the pronunciation is uh, made wrongly. The royal pronunciation is Ninus. Flute has pronounced it uh, incorrectly, Nini. So, this person, Queens, is correcting uh, a flute that you know you should pronounce it Ninus, it's not Nini. And by the time uh, Pyramus is here, which means bottom is here, playing the role of uh, Pyramus, you should be able to speak your line, deliver your line. Flute, oh, as true as a truest horse that yet would never try a re enter buck and bottom with an ass's head. Okay, so now uh, this person has entered who? Bottom, who is playing the role of who? Pyramus. He's entered and what do we see? His head is of the donkey. He has this head of a donkey. Oh my god. Donkey? What has happened to him? Flute. Oh monstrous. Oh strange. We are haunted. Pray monsters. Fly monsters. Help. Uh, uh, why do they run away? This is a knavery of them to make me afraid. So, uh, he has entered the scene, bottom has entered the scene as, as Pyramus, the lover. But he didn't realize that he had a head of a donkey. His face, his head was changed into the face and head of a donkey by this magician, Puck. And he's entering. And uh, flute, who is probably playing the role of, um, of, of the lover, this way, uh, she's afraid and she says, Oh, monster, oh, monster, oh my god, monster! And, and, uh, and they all, they are all running away from bottom. They're all running away from Pyramus. Why are they running, running away from me? What happened? Oh, monster, monster, oh, it, it, you know, just like they have seen a ghost or a uh, real monster or something. Because this guy, this poor guy bottom, he doesn't know that his uh, head has been changed and he's now looking like a donkey, a real original donkey. Uh, you know, uh, human body 
with the face and head of a donkey. Uh, maybe they are just doing knavery of, you know, they're doing, this is a knavery of them to make me uh, afraid, you know. He thinks, oh, they are trying to scare me. They are trying to make me feel afraid. <laughs> I am aware of all their jokes. They, they can't trick me. They can't fool me. Snout, oh bottom, thou art changed. What do I see on thee? What do you, what you, what do you see? You see an ass head of your own. Do you? <laughs> bless thee, bottom, bless thee, thou art translated. Bottom, I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me, to fright me if they could. But I will not uh, stir from this place. So uh, his friend Snout is saying, Oh, bottom, your face has changed. You, your face is not your face anymore. Your face is like a donkey. And this bottom, <laughs> come on, you're trying to trick me. You're trying to fool me. You think um, I'm, I'm going to believe all this. You think you can make a fool of, out of me. You will never be able to fool me. Uh, what do you see? Are you see? Uh, and then he again told him, no, your face, my brother, is really like a donkey now. So then the bottom replies, maybe you see your own face in my face. <laughs> He's still being humorous. He's not believing them. Let's see what will happen next. They can, I will walk up and down here and I will sing that they shall hear I am not afraid. Sings the blackbird so black of hue with orange tawny bill, the throstle with his note so true, the wren with little quill. So. If they are trying to fool me, my friends, I'm, if they are trying to fool me, I'm not going to, um, uh, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to give up. I won't let them succeed. I'm going to walk here. I'm going to keep walking here and I'm going to sing song. They can't fool me. I'm going to be as relaxed as possible because I know whatever they are saying, just a joke. They are trying to fool me. Titania awaking, what angel wakes me from my flowery bed, looks at bottom who continues to sing. I pray the gentle mortal sing again, mine ear is much enamored of thy note, so is mine eye and thrill to thy shape, and thy fair virtues for spipera, uh, perforce doth move me on the first view to say, to swear I love thee. Ah. Queen, you remember Queen Titania, she is asleep there. You remember that magic that Puck did on, on her while she was asleep? She put something into her eyes while she was asleep. She opened her eyes like this and put something in there. And the magic was, whoever she will see first after waking up, she is going to fall in love with that person. So Queen Titania is waking up. Mm, who is singing this beautiful song? and she sees this man with the head of a donkey and that donkey man uh, is still singing and and he and, and and titania the queen titania says i really love the way you are singing i love all the notes that you are singing i love your voice and i love everything about you so and i love thee and i love you i swear i love you Bottom me thinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that, and yet to say the truth, reason and love hardly keep company together nowadays. The more the pity that home honest neighbors will not make them friends, nay, I can click upon occasions. I am in love with you, the queen Titania says. Hmm? Me? Me? Bottom? You are in love with me? Uh, I think. Do you have any reason for that? And anyway, uh, love is not a very common thing these days. And he says, you know, uh, love does not keep company together. Hardly love hardly keep company together nowadays, which means love uh, is not lasting uh, for very long these days. Uh, as a part of humor, bottom is saying, Titania, thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. And, and she's saying, you are as wise as beautiful. You know, you are so wise and you are so beautiful. I am really impressed with you and I am in love with you. It's because of the magic, it's the effect of the magic. Bottom says, not so neither, but if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve mine own turn. And since she's saying you are so wise and so beautiful and you are as wise as you are beautiful, to, uh, to the, uh, in reply, Bottom says, you know, if I had that level of wisdom, if I had that wit, Ah, but I've got out of this place before, Titania. Out of this wood, do not desire to go. No, please don't wish to go out of this place. Thou shalt remain here. You remain here. 
please remain here with me whether thou wilt or not whether you will it or not but you will have to be here remain here i am a spirit of no common rate the summer still doth tend upon my state and i do love thee therefore go with me i will give thee fairies to attend on thee and they shall fetch the javel jewels from the deep and sing while thou on pressed flowers do sleep and i will purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit so peace blossom cobweb moth and mustard seed so he is um, uh, you know he is there bottom with donkey head and queen titania is saying please don't desire to go out of this place you are mine and only mine if you want to go don't go whether you will it or not will it you will have to stay here you know i am not of you know i'm not i'm a spirit of no no common rate i'm not a common spirit i can control weather i can you know do whatever i want with the weather and i love you very much and i will appoint for you some fairies who will take care of you please my love don't go out of this place and don't think of leaving me for i am in love with you very very much and then she has appointed these uh, uh, fairies peace blossom cobweb and moth these are and, and mustard seed these are four these are the names of four fairies that the queen titania has appointed to take care of bottom the guy with the donkey head peace blossom ready and i and i and i and they are saying okay uh, because they they just want to follow the mm, uh, you know the the command of the queen titania and here is the picture for you queen titania and bottom who was playing the role of the lover pyramus from the play pyramus and thisbe uh, a love story play and you know this is the queen titania of the world of fairies the wife of king oberon going through her punishment magician puck she put something into her eyes and according to that whenever she would wake up the first person she would see she would fall in love with that person and that person happened to be this donkey something uh, you know i think i believe you are finding this story very humorous and funny and you know you can see uh, i am in love with you and he's saying me are you sure then see let's see what happens in the story all where shall we go uh, all the fairies that have been appointed they are asking where shall, where shall we go titania be kind and courteous to this gentleman hop in his box and gambol in his eyes feed him with apricots and dewberries with purple grapes green figs and mulberry uh, and mulberries not to him elves and do uh, him courtesies titania queen titania is ordering he is my lover please be kind to him i love him very much so please be kind to him please be courteous to him please take care of him as much as you can and feed him apricots and mulberries and grapes all the good things that we have feed him all that and please be courteous to him for i love him very very much so this uh, this blossom say hail mortal hail mortal oh hail hail so they are all saying hail now mortal means people who die immortal immortal is only god and human beings are mortal we die you know and maybe these fairies they are also immortal too according to the story they don't die but mortal people are those people who die immortal people are uh, people who never die so hey mortal hey human being hail all hail to you you must have heard it all hail the king you know all you know which means uh, a, a praise uh, a shout of praise or a shout of good wish for this person they are saying bottom i cry your worship's mercy heartily i beseech your worship's name cobweb i shall desire you of more acquaintance good master cobweb if i cut my finger i shall make bold with you your name honest gentleman now bottom has bottom has started to joke with cobweb cobweb is supposed to in those times so you know when you are when you have a, you have received some cut or something like that you you know you apply a bandage kind of thing to get healed so cobweb used to be some kind of thing in those times so he's saying hey oh cobweb if i will get cut in my finger if i will get hurt i'll use you 
and he's joking with the uh, go web then he's joking with the peace blossom please blossom i pray you commend me to mr squash your mother and to master peace code your father good master peace blossom i shall desire you of more acquaintance too your name i beseech you sir and then he's doing he's making fun of the um, this other fairy uh, peace blossom uh, then must mustard seed uh, mustard seed and fairy all these fairies are standing in front of uh, uh, and uh, in front of bottom and treating him like like a king and mustard seed peace blossom all, all hell mortal all hell and they are you know that's how they're behaving in front of him bottom good master mustard seed uh, mustard seed i know your patience well that same cowardly giant like ox beef had devoured many a gentleman of your house i promise you your kindred hath made my eyes water air now i desire your more acquaintance good master mustard seed so now bottom is making fun of mustard seed the name of this fairy is mustard seed and mustard seed is also you know sir suka uh, you i'm sure you know about that so that's that's the mustard seed uh, and that you know that's there uh, with the help of ox and uh, giant like ox and beef it you know it used to be uh, in the land on the agriculture land uh, you know that's how the this is a part of the process of mustard seed that uh, on the agriculture land ox will do some work ox will walk upon that so he is making fun of mustard seed now oh, mustard seed there are many ox and uh, some ox and you know beef ox beef they have troubled you a lot and I, you know i've got i've got tears in my eyes for the pain that you went through mustard seed now queen titania says come wait upon him lead him to my bower the moon methinks looks with a watery eye and when she weeps weeps every little flower lamenting something too and now queen titania says come with me uh, you know come and take him to my bower which means the, that royal place where the queen stays he come with me and uh, take the, you know uh, lead him to my bower take him to my bower and that's where they are going we are going we are going to all go so this is it with this chapter here it's uh, it's not the perfect ending it's just as we learned uh, before we begin the story before we you know we were about to get inside the story we learned about it this is just as seen a part of uh, a midnight uh, uh, um, we, we have been given here so if you want to know what happens next you can read this story a midnight a midsummer night stream okay a midsummer night stream this was just a scene uh, just a small part from this uh, work of art of uh, william shakespeare a midsummer night's dream we will talk about it again uh, later in your live session I hope you have really enjoyed this uh, video. So this is it for today. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you very soon again. I really enjoyed spending this time with you. Peace be with you. God bless you.